So good morning, everybody, and thank you for joining us. Um, and by us, I would like to introduce you to my friend Nande. Nande Boss um, is a fairly new friend to me, but someone who has taken such a deep dive into encouraging, speaking life, leading, and her love for God and for God's word is evident in every conversation you have with her. Nande is a business leader. Um, she's a gifted communicator. Um, she's also a mom and a friend, and I'm privileged to um, yeah, be walking a road of friendship with her. So Nande, thank you for joining us today. Thank you, and thank you for those kind and generous words in the introduction, Jess. <laughs> It's very so excited easy. for this. It's so easy for me to say them because they are true. So, Ananda, oh, we right. are in the series called Dare to Dream. Um, and we're looking at the life of Joseph, someone who had big dreams. Those dreams did not uh, materialize in the way that he expected to. There were lots of detours along the way. Um, and we really just want to dig into the life of ordinary Jesus followers like yourself and just find those stories that are familiar um, to so many of us that that sort of parallel the journey that that Joseph has been on and went on so would you mind just telling us a little bit about a time where um, there was a dream in your heart a hope an expectation of how things would turn out and then it didn't go that way <laughs> Okay, great. Well, I am you talking to the right person because I am a dreamer, quite like, quite like Joseph. I, in fact, before this, was reading again the story in Genesis, just refresher, going back again. And there's a verse that caught my attention where um, his brothers say, here comes the dreamer. So, you know, um, I am a dreamer and I am known in my family to be a dreamer, a person with a high imagination. <laughs> I often vocalize or write down my dreams and share with the world. Anyway, when you think, when we talk about um, a dream, I remember quite recently at the end of 2019, going into the big 2020, going into a new year, going into a new decade, my parents joined me in Cape Town. My parents um, had lived, we've all lived in Craddock in the Eastern Cape. And for the first time since my brother and I left our, our home to go to university, study and work, my parents were rejoining us now in the same city, which meant we were going to have weekends together. We we're going to spend incredible time. And for us to, um, at a bigger scale and closer, be able to share our achievements, really, not at some holiday. And so at the end of that year, going into the new year, I had big dreams. <laughs> around just having the family together again. You spoke about me being a communicator, but there's nothing like being able to communicate with your people, yeah. your parents on a weekly basis in person. Um, so amongst my 2020, 2020 dreams, amongst my new decade um, goals really, was to um, have my family experience the Nande boss. I know many outside of my family have been experiencing. I was like, um, you know, dad can hear about such things, but he hasn't seen me in my element, seen me, you know, lead a, a, a meeting, seen me preach. I was very excited to have that moment with them. And I was very excited to share. I had um, a new job offer that I was keen to, you know, get them all in and enjoy just me flourishing and coming into, you know, being and in my element. And um, well, you would know, and I would know that 2020 started off okay. <laughs> and um, immediately the first week of um, work, new job, we went into uh, what would be a 21 day lockdown um, with the hit of the global pandemic health crisis, COVID-19. Along with that time of chaos, soon came a time of then 
um, get, receiving the uh, colon cancer diagnosis for my dad. So 2020, when I think about that year, it, it was the year I actually wrote down audacious dreams. I wrote down smart, specific goals, um, but which really included my, my family on the journey, not just me winning, just everyone on the journey. I know I had a couple of travel plans and we didn't go anyway, yeah. anyway. <laughs> 2020. Um, it might not seem like a big dream, but in my heart, Jess, it really, it really was to include my family on the journey, to take them to the places we've always dream dreamed about. I think they had only been out of the country um, continent once. Mm -hmm. And I had, I, you know, when you set up to, to just spoil your parents and then be stuck with them, stuck is probably both well, it's a reality stuck with them in home many a time sitting in darkness with load shedding many a time wondering did I even hear God about the year of difference you know 2021 for me was a, a different year doing things differently you know pulling back from a lot to pull in with my people mm -hmm. and um, I thought I was dreaming to pull in so that I could flourish but I um, the events over 2020 pulled me into a pit of disappointment mm -hmm. and, and, and grief really coming to terms with this huge diagnosis. Um, my dad is the first person who's close to me and who I know on a personal level to be diagnosed with um, colon cancer and then not making it. And I can imagine yeah. that just that first setback of the bad news, the change in a global setting must have made you wonder if you'd actually dreamt correctly. Like, God, did these dreams yes. come from you? Did I make yes. this stuff up? Or have I, have I heard your voice wrong? Um, yes. And that th those kind of doubts can be disappointing not only in your circumstances but disappoints that God like set you up for hoping that it would be good yes yes getting me all excited mm -hmm. confirming his word and me to even sharing a lot of it with my family and then boom mm -hmm. <laughs> and there's a vulnerability in saying out loud what you think your hopes and dreams it will what you what you feel your hopes and dreams are you know, there's another thing to hold it close to your chest and be like, oh, I really am hoping that this is going to happen. Oh, I'd love to see this take shape. But to actually say yeah. it out loud, it, that's yes. risky and vulnerable. It's such a huge act of trust. Such a huge act of trust. And also, now I'm not the only one that's disappointed. We're disappointed together. The whole family is disappointed. Mm -hmm. Then you feel like you are failing people as well. And Mm. Oh, it's a mess. So you had hopes for quality time together as a family. You had hopes quality for adventures time. and sharing more of your life. Um, and then along comes this devastating diagnosis of your dad's colon cancer. What, what happened after that? What happened after that is I had to, you know, dig deep, I guess, because oh. now obviously a lot of is put aside and the focus is to be strong you know and um, mm. speak life and not be accommodative of this dreadful disease but um, being accommodative of what we already know um, that Jesus is our healer being accommodative of what we already know that we don't need to move and respond to our circumstance but move and respond to the revelation that we have of the person Jesus um, what happened next was now I need to ask myself why do I believe what I believe <laughs> and um, um, what does it mean um, Emmanuel God is with us is he with me only when things are going okay is he with me when 
that is his his presence is the evidence of the dream coming alive is he even present in the disappointment now so as you as i'm working out my faith and <laughs> being the encourager you said that i am to encourage others in the family because it became like a, a talk about quality time it really became quality time now to believe more so now at the back of the disappointment of what hasn't been now to believe again that God will heal and you know all of those dreams are still valid mm. it became such a, a an intense open heart surgery like very um real thing to to wrestle with and come to terms with do I believe the things that I say? I believe um, the word of God mm. is Jesus real for me in this moment. And he mm. really was and is Jess. Yeah. I'm so glad you acknowledged the, the, the why, the wrestling of why, not just why is this happening to me, but why do I believe yeah. what I believe? Like yeah, why, yeah. why, what is the evidence of my faith and, and what, what motivation do I have? What proof do I have? What energy is there to believe that God is actually with me right now? Because yeah. it's not evidence. It's not yeah. in the reality around you. And yet the promise is. Um, yeah. and, I, and it's amazing to me that you've landed where you have that um, God is real. Jesus is with you. And that yes. his word is true. Because yes. where things have gone with your dad, you've suffered a huge loss. How how did that feel? And and what what how what did the process feel like when you realized that recovery was not actually going to happen? Well, um, maybe my family had moments like that, but I didn't. There was no moment <laughs> in my process where I actually believed recovery won't happen. There was. Um, never a moment where I believed, okay, I have to I have to prepare my heart for my dad's departure. There's never a moment from the time my dad got diagnosed to the time he took his last breath that I believed that he would die. Wow. So if we talk about disappointment and you talk about a pit, um, if you talk about a dreamer, I really um, took God's word that he's healer and that he would heal my dad to the point where the, when the doctors told us that, well, they've reached the end of their medical journey and what they can do to curb the cancer, to help dad to recover, when they reached the end of their journey, my confession and my true belief was that, well, when the doctors reach the end of their road, it's time for the chief physician, Jesus, to take the wheel, you know? And that was my confession until... I lay um, next to my dad's dead body and realized that we are really and truly more spirit than we are body. No one could have taught me that in that moment, that even though he physically he's not here with me, but um, that you know if he's absent in the body, he's present with the Lord. That is no scripture or just a mere, that was just now, the true realization that I am on this earth, but it's not the end that um, life continues and that our time here is so brief compared to eternity in, in, um, in heaven with the Lord. And I think um, if I were to call myself, and I did, call myself a dreamer before this big event crisis, losing my dad, I am more of a dreamer now because I am saying with the time I have here, I better do what my dad did to say that he ran his race and he fulfilled what he was meant to do on the earth. You know, and I, I, I'm like, I better, I better stick with God and dream that God dreams and, um, fulfill what he needs me to fulfill I better not waste time by thinking what are people going to say or how this looks like I better write them down I better get clear on what he's saying even in this time of grief I better get clear on 
what it means that he's close to the broken hearted. Um, I better dig for myself, not to escape the grief, but in it, you know, um, get to know this holy God who sits with us in our disappointment, a God who's not fragile when we are fragile, a God who remains faithful when we unfaithful. I better lean into this, um, you know, prophetic dream I have of real community. What does community look like in a pandemic? Uh, all those dreams of there are sisters who can hold it down for you. Um, I'm dreaming again in the midst of dreams that didn't come to pass. I'm dreaming again. And that can only be the grace of God. Oh. Oh. Can I pray for you, my friend? Yes. Oh, we thank you, God, for your Holy Spirit, for the dreams that you plant in our hearts that when they arrive there, they already feel radically huge and exciting and bigger than us. And yet, even in our circumstances that seem to see, be bigger than us, you birth an even grander dream. And I just thank you for my friend Nande. I thank you for the way you have enlarged her heart and her hope. I thank you for the way that you have expanded the stream to be greater than its original conception. And Lord, I pray that her hope and dream of intimacy of shared life of community of family would continue to be reshaped and and created by you the beautiful creator that Nande's glimpse that she had the year she had with her dad in her home or that 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 would just have been a glimpse of the dream that you've planted in her heart of community now and of eternal community, of eternal relationship, of eternal family. Thank you for letting her have a glimpse of that now, Lord, and the way she invites all of us to dream big dreams. Lord, we are grateful for this invitation, and we respond to it now with open hearts. Pray your blessing over this next season, 2021, a year of fruitful relationships, a year of adventure, a year of purpose. May they all be realized in ways that once again, Monday thinks she knows, but God, you've only just given her a glimpse. Pray that you would exceed her expectations once again, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. So Friend, cool. I just want to say thank you for sharing um, your pain with us, but um, your joy is incredibly encouraging because it is so real. It is <laughs> not um, conjured up, it is cultivated, and thank you for doing that good hard work. It's <laughs> such a blessing. So, cool. so <laughs> just, yeah, I pray for you and your family that you would go from what you think is a big dream to what is a truly <laughs> radical dream um, and keep dreaming those dreams, girl. Amen. I love the word that you used in your prayer. And as you kept referring to English word glimpse, like, mm -hmm. you know, I, I often think of our dreams as seed form really. And mm -hmm. one seed um, can be a forest. So mm -hmm. Um, you know, we prophesy and know in part, and that word glimpse, I'm going to write it down as it starts the year 2022, that whatever I see, I need to remember, it's only by the glimpse, it's only by the seed. The seed, and you know what, I've just got this beautiful picture in my head of you, and you're not walking through a forest, you're walking through a, a forest of saplings, like they're little trees, and and you're kind of, you're walking through it the way some people walk through beautiful old forests, just soaking in the height and the grandness and, you know, the shade. I, I see you kind of walking through um, a forest of saplings and they're, they're still young and they're still quite 
tender, but there's a vibrancy in them. There's so much potential, Ooh. like a field of just potential. And you're walking through and you're just enjoying them. And it's because you're looking past what they are now to what they one day will. Wow. It's so vivid for me, friend. So um, yeah. Please draw it. Just oh, I wish I had I'm way too. more of an artist with my words than with my the best <laughs> I can find a picture for you of what I'm imagining right now. Oh yes. Wow. So good. So awesome. Dare to dream. Da- dare to series. dream. So for all of you who have joined us today, um, whatever little seeds have been planted in your heart, grab them, hold them, water them, feed them, look after them, protect them. Um, because they are going to grow and we just we want to encourage you dare to dream amen